Okay, so today we're just quickly going to try and build one of these little micro, ultra micro quadcopters. So um, I've done some of the work here already, but it's very basic work. Of course, I got the frame, and uh, you know any of these micro frames, very light frames, will work. I'll put a link out on the on the video for that, and that's its little top plate. But you can just 3D print these or or buy them; doesn't really matter. Um, so you need the frame. Then uh, you know I've got one of those VA1100 um, little uh, um, FPV and camera combos in here, and I put it in a little case. I don't know if you can see a little case; it's a little beat up. But I'll put a link for that case also. But I mean, you don't need the case. I just put it because it comes out with these little black things at the top, and that protects the antenna a little in case of a crash. I like putting mine in a little printed case just to protect it. So I glued that onto the frame and then I stuck the four little 8.5 millimeter motors in here and um, because I've used these motors before I've actually extended the wires a little and uh, you'll see that you know that's very simple. Put a little, just little bit of heat shrink over yeah. them at the end of the day to make them uh, um, stay better but that's all I've done so far. I've got it that far. Then um, the other thing I need, of course, is a flight controller. And the flight controller I have is this um, one from Hobby King. It's a quantum flight controller. Um, and it's only this small. It's really, really small little uh, uh, flight controller. Um, but it can run clean flight. 32-bit. Um, it's got a built-in receiver, as you can see by the antenna. Takes a micro USB. And this guy is, uh, um, of course, a brushed fresh flight controller, meaning it's already got a little um, uh, uh, transistors and stuff on there to make. Um, and there's four of them for each motor and a little pad. So, um, you know, in, in, in terms of brushed. These are just little DC motors that takes, you know, positive and negative. So there's really just these eight wires that need to be soldered. And you'll see there's little pads for them. There's eight wires and those little pads. So that's got to go on there. And uh, then, of course, you need a battery. I like that battery. And you need little propellers. And those are the little propellers that you know, go on the motors and a few of these little um, screws to tighten the frame it's, you need that that's part of a frame, depends on the frame you have then of course you need a just a power wire and um, this is uh, this one that goes with, with that uh, battery I think it's a Molex it's called and then I cut from a VA1100, I cut this little connector off uh, just, you know, so that it can be a little bit more modular. And um, so now what I have is I can plug it in here and now I can uh, connect that to my power also. So that I could, you know, disconnect this uh, VA1100 if I wanted to fly without it, you know, after I assembled this. So. Let's go through the assembly. Um, I'm going to probably speed that up a little and let's see uh, how that goes. It should be fairly, fairly simple.
Good. Now I've got my VA on there, my VA plug, and I've got my power plug on there. Now let's start to uh, mount this guy quickly onto the frame. There it is, it's mounted. Okay, now let's start putting on the little motors. This is the most tricky part about this is soldering these little motor pads and um, its orientation is plus to the middle and negative to the outside so um, let's confirm that plus to the middle negative to the outside yep and there we go these pads are very small so be very careful yeah that you don't touch them. Okay, so with all of that done, of course we can add the battery to see that the, boot, the board boots at this time. You can see that the board boots up. Everything's looking good. Okay, so now most of the, the development work is done or the building work is done. Let me get the control. Okay, so here I have clean flight and I'm going to plug it in now into clean flight into my machine and it immediately connects um, but um, you know it's 1.9.0 uh, clean flight so the major parts here is um, and I'll make another video on how to upgrade it you can definitely upgrade it um, to the latest version but what's important is this needs to be set to zero RX in configuration. Um, I like to spin the motors when it's armed. Um, this guard, um, I like this minimum throttle to be 1050. I like that, the minimum throttle over here. I don't measure the battery voltage. It must be RX serial over here. And then um, you have to choose here. Um, I'm choosing Spectrum 1024, uh, fail safe, go to a thousand, that's the basic stuff on this screen and I'm just going to save and reboot that. The other thing that's important is in the CLI, if you upgrade, <laughs> sorry, if you upgrade and you, uh, uh, you turn the thing on and the motors just start spinning at full blast, you haven't set this value. and um, there's a value in here and let me see if I can find it uh, motor there it is this value motor PWM rate 4000 so you have to if you upgrade it you have to run this command set motor PWM rate 4000 and then you gotta go and save okay that's very important that's the uh, only thing I do in the CLI for the standard setup you know not not going crazy then um, let's go look then um, at the receiver side of it after it's rebooted 
let's go look at um, the receiver side I'm gonna go back into my receiver and I'm gonna go into bind mode just to make sure again that I am bound okay so I'm bound at the moment and um, let's have a look my throttle is working as expected my yaw and um, here I had to set it it's on default but I think it's on um, this uh, T-I-E-R that's where you want to be and you can see that everything's working as expected I've mapped my channel 1 to a switch and I've mapped this channel to another switch so this AUX1 I want to use for uh, arming and this to use it for uh, maybe switching mode or something like that so if I go into the mode and uh, I'm going I to say um, AUX1 that's one so mode AUX1 I want to when it gets to that range I want it to arm and I want to engage maybe horizontal mode um, on AUX2 um, will be here all the time but when I switch out of it it will be there so um, let's save that so it's typically on sorry arm um, there we go up here save that so that arms it, this arms, arms, this arms horizontal, not horizontal so we got that let's just go in here and calibrate the accel accelerometer we're all good we go back into the modes, that's all saved now let's look at our PID tuning I like to fly an Lux float over here um, that's my preferred um, uh, um, uh, uh, for for the small copters, so I fly in Lux float. I um, put my rates up to about 30, 0.3, and my yaw rate I do about a little bit there. Then I set my TPA quite high on this. Um, I would set that at about 25 on 1600. Uh, because you fly pretty high with these guys fly high on the on the throttle so there it is arming and um, let's go see if it can actually uh okay so back over here we've got the little copter just finished programming it antennas on there I can uh, plug the power in. I will watch a little green light flash until it's done and that means uh, clean flight's booting up, the board's booting up, it's ready and then I'll hit my arm switch and there it is, it actually arms and it accelerates so let's disconnect that and finish the build go it actually takes off and now the last thing that remains is really just adding or plugging in my FPV camera which I had left out uh, while I'm testing this just to make sure you know I don't if there's a short or something at least I don't burn that out and 
I don't take extra voltage I don't need. So um, there is the FPV part. Get that guy plugged in there. There we go. It's in there. It's now FPV enabled. I turn this on. Yep, my FPV little camera is on. And it should be ready to go fly. Mm -hmm.